So far, President Biden has been coy on whether or not he plans to run for president in 2024. You also just made some news by saying that you are going to run for re-election. I said that is my expectation. So is that a yes, that you are running for re-election? Look, I'm, I, I don't know where you guys come from, man. I've never been able to travel. I'm a great respecter of fate. I've never been able to plan four and a half, three and a half years ahead for certain. While Biden said he expects to run, the elephant in the room is that the president will be 81 when he potentially seeks re-election. If Biden decides against running, Vice President Kamala Harris is expected to run for the nomination. Well, we have the first 2024 Democratic primary numbers coming in from the Hill and Harris X. Let's take a look at those. The rest of the world's wondering about us. The kinds of things that are being said of late, I think you're beginning to see some of the, and both, and by Democrats as well, sort of the venom get, sort of, sort of leak out of a lot of it. We got to get beyond this. Mm. What do you say to your grandchildren or your children about what's happening? Do you ever remember a time like this before in the entire history, whether you're a Democrat or Republican? This is not who we are. Come on, man. Biden easily takes the lead with 73 percent support, followed by a tie between Kamala Harris and Michelle Obama at 34 percent. 2020 presidential hopefuls Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren and Pete Buttigieg also tied at 19 percent, followed by Stacey Abrams at 15 and Cory Booker at 14. AOC and Andrew Yang, <laughs> 9 percent and 7 percent. Yesterday, we covered Hill Harris X's first 2024 GOP primary poll, where Trump was in the lead at 56 percent. And, the, and these are candidates that you would consider voting for, not necessarily the only ones. You could pick more than one. That's why the numbers add up to well over 100 if you're a math whiz out there. <laughs> Emily, what's your take on the numbers for the Democratic primary? What do you make of the difference between primary support for Biden compared to Trump? Well, I think it's exactly what we just saw in the SOT before we ran the poll numbers, which is that Biden himself has been a little coy about this. It is pretty obvious that he's aging rapidly and he has over right, the but course. But Trump's been coy, too, and yet is 20 points lower than Biden among his own party. I just don't think anybody buys Trump's coyness. You think <laughs> you he's know? In. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, th I think he's in. Um, Same with Biden. He's as in. of like, now. If, if Biden is healthy enough, he's running. No, like zero question. But that's such a huge if, because whereas Trump would also be fairly old by the time that primary would take place and by the time he would be seated as president, if he were, if he were to win the election, Joe Biden's age shows much more than Trump and I think has become very clearly, it was in the primary, but now that he's president, it also is just very clearly one of the key questions surrounding his fitness for office, in addition to the policy issues that people talk about, the temperament issues that people talk about with any person who runs for that job or holds it. Um, his age has, has been a big factor. Yeah, and I think kind of McDonald's preservatives have made Trump kind of ageless. And, I think and he, the KFC. I, he's he's going to outlive all of us. It's KFC. It's McDonald's. Yeah. I mean, what can you do at that yeah. point? You'll, you'll live till you're 200. It's I mean, it's, powerful his, stuff. His doctor in 2016 said he was the healthiest man on the planet, if, it, if I recall. Ever to ever in the, the history. Yeah, yes. it's amazing. So if Kamala Harris does decide to run in 2024, many Democrats, including a few current senior administration officials, are worried she wouldn't be able to defeat Donald Trump or any GOP candidate, for that matter. That's according to reporting from Axios. I've heard, I've heard this a lot from uh, Democrats as, as well. I know that uh, because she is vice president, people kind of position her as 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 next in line. But the conventional wisdom is is rapidly forming mm -hmm. am, among Democrats that she just doesn't have what it takes on a national level.
She doesn't. I mean, this is a woman who had so much hype, had so much support from the legacy media and did not make it to Iowa. Uh, that's a huge, 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 obvious glaring problem with her ability to run against somebody who is popular with a big chunk of the country. He's unpopular with a big chunk of the country, too. But he already comes in with that baked in popularity of a lot of people. And she's Clinton-esque in the way that you, it's a juxtaposition that's helpful to Donald Trump. She's not able to also seem like, in, in Joe Biden's sense, he's right. calm and reasonable and normal. She also has this like added thing where she's, I think, you know, comes in and um, throws things around and looks more obviously like she's lying. She did her fun tour through the Hamptons to raise money. Not that Joe Biden didn't do that um, back in the Democratic primary, even before the Democratic primary heated up back in um, 2020. And so she comes with a lot of the same, I think, Clinton baggage that Joe Biden was able to kind of rise above because he's Joe Biden. And there's just something about Joe Biden where he's got that sort of like um, he's got that thing going for him. I don't even know how you would define it, but he's able to kind of transcend it. Um, I nothing think sticks to him. Nothing sticks yeah. to the guy. Yeah. But with uh, with with Kamala Harris's baggage, I think that would be a, a positive juxtaposition from Donald Trump's perspective um, at capturing some of those voters that maybe went with Biden in 2020. Right. And as a candidate, um, your job is to run an effective campaign, an efficient campaign. Uh, there were just tons of stories about what an absolutely chaotic, uh, disastrous, yeah. like just managed operation it was. Mm -hmm. uh, the Harris campaign. The, the, the Harris campaign. And right now, with her everybody staff. saying it, it, it the buck stops with her, that, the, that she, was the pro, she was the managerial problem. And now you're getting the same reports out of, uh, out of the vice, vice presidential office that, that, that she just uh, poorly runs uh, her, her shop. Mm -hmm. And the response will be, well, that's sexist to say that. You know, but you know, I think people who are making that argument in defense of her are actually kind of uh, doing her a disservice yeah. because it allows her then to say, well, these aren't real criticisms that I need to grapple with. This is just a sexist media. Yes. You know, but no, like I think if, if the campaign was uh, so badly run that it had that uh, all of these ar articles are written about it and people are internally complaining about it and you don't make it to Iowa and then the same thing happens uh, as vice president, may maybe it's something that you actually need to take care of. Yeah, I don't think she masks her dishonesty particularly well. Um, and I think Joe Biden Which is... The key trait of a politician is yeah. being able to mask it's it. it. And that's it. That's, that is like, literally all you need to do uh, like because the they're all dishonest. Ask for much. They just want to appear the pretense. like you know, pretense. Just give them the pretense. Yes. Um, and like no, Bill Clinton. Like, you're like, oh, OK. Exactly. Sure. Exactly. I, it's probably a lie, but it sounded good. And it's amazing. I mean, again, like it's not to say that she would definitely lose to Trump because Joe Biden's dishonesty was helped greatly by <laughs> suppression that was uh, then instigated by the entire basically Silicon Valley. And Joe Biden, who said he leading into South Carolina, kept telling a story that he got arrested on his way to try to meet uh, Nelson Mandela in South yeah. Africa, just kept saying it. Well, and he's, you know, again, speaking of nothing sticking to him, his plagiarism. I mean, he was able to run for president multiple times, and then that was always something that kind of dogged him. But here he is now, and it, because I think Donald Trump had, had so many issues himself, Joe Biden was just able to sort of sneak that out. But Kamala Harris is a weaker candidate who, even again, with the support of the legacy media, which would certainly give her plenty of support um, in, in a race against Donald Trump, she couldn't even make it to Iowa. It's not like she right. made it to New Hampshire, she made it to South Carolina. She dropped out before Iowa. Right, and this poll is, is really bad for her in this sense. It says, who would you consider voting for? So yeah. the people say, yeah, I'd consider voting for Biden. And what, what about Kamala Harris? Would you consider voting for her? To have only 34% say that they would consider voting for her, Democrats yeah. in a primary, and she's the vice president. Democrats are very get in line voters. Mm -hmm. like they, they, you know, they, they, they do what they're told yep. by, by the media, by the party. Joe Biden, great example of that. Exactly. We, saw, we saw it unfold in South Carolina and then on Super Tuesday. The, 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 the fastest shift in, in, in polling that people had seen in, in modern history. Yep. Uh, but to have only 34 percent of Democratic primary voters say that they would consider voting for the sitting vice president. Yeah. It's like, whoa.
That's a great point. The sitting vice president, who again is very popular uh, with the establishment and with the legacy press, so she already has all of that support. She gets constantly feted by the by them. I'm in the not media. even sure how deep that support goes. Yeah, no, it, it's a it's a fair question. Although at least right now, when she's juxtaposed in, in different situations, it turns out really well for her, and she ends up on the cover of magazines and being treated like a champion for women um, and for the working class, which is of course laughable. Um, we'll see. I don't think Michelle Obama has any interest in running, but I. I do think she would, I think she would do pretty well if she did. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Wait, who, that who? Michelle Obama. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah. No. I think she'll, she she'll she's be, so popular. She'll be at the top of Democratic polls uh, for the rest of her life and will never run. Yeah. That's, that's my take. Yeah, exactly. Well, thanks for watching What America's Thinks, Thinking. We will see you next time.